Sometimes when somebody finds out I'm Jewish, they ask me about my history. How can somebody who looks like me be Jewish? It's not a completely unfair question. The most famous Jews are people like Woody Allen, or Barbara Streisand, and Jerry Seinfeld. But it's a question that stems from a common misconception, that many understand typical Jews to be white people who immigrated from Eastern Europe. When Hollywood standardizes this Eurocentric viewpoint, it betrays reality. Yeah, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? <laughs> Enjoy because the image of Jewishness is actually a wide array of Jewish characters, cultures, and something far broader than just skin color. Whether we're talking about European, Ethiopian, Yemenite, Indian, Asian, or Turkish Jews, the story of racial and ethnic diversity of the Jewish people goes back millennia. The story of Jews in the Americas, including black Jews, begins only about four or 500 years ago. The Israelites who built an independent kingdom in the land of Israel 4,000 years ago probably didn't look like this. Thousands of years of moving throughout the world has led to the diversification of Jewish identity. There is no one Jewish look. Over 2,000 years ago, the tribes of Israel were scattered from their biblical homeland and haven't stopped moving since. Spain, Iraq, Iran, India, and parts of Africa have all had Jewish populations for hundreds, if not thousands of years. In the late 15th century, after the Spanish Inquisition, when authorities passed a decree forcing Jews to convert to Catholicism, many Jews fled to the New World and Jewish communities began to develop. As the colonies expanded, Jews from across Europe continued to immigrate. It wasn't long after this that the first black Jews appeared in America, when in the 1500s, European colonizers in Africa began sending African slaves to their newly built colonies in the Americas. According to research, it's highly possible that the first black Jews in the New World came as slaves from Jewish communities in Africa, like the Ethiopian Jews known as the Beta Israel. During the 15 and 1600s, slave ownership became more and more common in the New World, over time, these slaves took on the faith of the homes in which they were enslaved, whether by choice or by force. For most, that meant becoming Christians. But for a small group of slaves, that meant becoming Jews. Over time, some of these Jewish slaves or their descendants were sold to slave owners in the United States. While records are sparse, there are accounts of at least some black slaves in the US who maintained their Jewish faith and identity. Regardless of whether they were Jewish or not, black slaves felt a strong connection with the Israelites of the Bible who were rescued from slavery in Egypt and chosen by God for a unique destiny. A verse from Psalms particularly bolstered this connection. Princes shall come out of Egypt, and Ethiopia shall soon stretch forth her hands unto God. This verse empowered and uplifted many while leading others to believe it to be a proof of a historical connection between the biblical Israelites and modern day black peoples. With the great migration of the early 20th century, millions of black Americans relocated to northern states in search of opportunity and to escape racist Jim Crow laws. Around the 1920s, black leaders founded Jewish-inspired African-American congregations. For some, these communities would be a path to joining mainstream denominational Judaism, namely through the path of conversion. Conversions would go on to become more common among black Americans in the decades to follow. The most famous example of conversion was the world-famous singer, actor, and comedian Sammy Davis Jr. Born to a Catholic mother and a Baptist father, Davis began his journey to Judaism after surviving a car crash in 1954. He discovered the similarities between Judaism and black culture from his friend, comedian Eddie Cantor, which led Davis to study the religion further and eventually convert. Another notable convert from this time was the civil rights activist Charles McDew. He converted to Judaism in high school, finding inspiration from a quote from the Ethics of the Fathers, if I am only for myself, what am I? If not now, when? McDew felt that this quote established a moral obligation to fight injustice and would become a mantra for him in his decades-long fight for civil rights. High-profile converts like these lead many people to believe that if they're meeting a black Jew, they're meeting a convert. But that's not the case, especially today. I myself am not a convert, nor were my parents. My father is a black Christian from Georgia, where his family had been for generations, while my Jewish mother's family came to Kansas from Eastern Europe. While interracial marriages like my parents are not unusual today, 
They used to be extremely uncommon and were even illegal in many states until 1967. That's when the Supreme Court ruled in Loving versus Virginia against anti-miscegenation laws, allowing for legal interracial marriage across the U.S. Many of those marriages were between blacks and Jews. In the second half of the 20th century, the number of black Jews increased significantly. This included those born Jewish, those adopted into Jewish families, and those who converted. That tapestry was on display in December 1993 at a symposium at the California African American Museum entitled Where Worlds Collide, The Souls of African American Jews. Shortly thereafter, black and multiracial Jews began forming organizations to support their particular concerns, issues, and Jewish heritage. In 1995, Robin Washington founded the National Conference of Black Jews. Around the year 2000, Bahá'u'lláh Hashon was founded to support Jewish interracial families. Around the same time, Yavila McCoy, a Black Orthodox diversity educator and consultant, started the Ayeka Resource Organization to provide support and resources for a multi-dimensional Jewish identity. Other multiracial Jewish organizations include Jews in All Hues, founded in 2009 by Jared Jackson, the Jews of Color Initiative, founded in 2016, and Joyous Justice, founded by April and Baskin that same year. The work of individuals and organizations like these and others have helped Jews and non-Jews alike appreciate the extent to which the Jewish people are a multiracial community. This shift has been aided in no small part by the fame of notable and talented black Jewish performers in pop culture. Actors such as David Diggs, Tiffany Haddish, and Rashida Jones have become household names. Drake, Yitz Jordan, aka Why Love, Shine, once known as Jamal Barrow, but now Moses Levi Barrow, Lenny Kravitz and Nisim Black have all had success in the music industry. However, as much as black Jews have become accepted in popular culture, race relations in America have remained complicated, especially in the realm of identity politics. When supporters of the Black Lives Matter movement engaged in protests beginning in 2016, many black Jews, rabbis, and rabbinical students joined them in protests, reading from the Book of Lamentations, blowing the shofar, and reciting the mourner's Kaddish. However, as individuals and leaders within the BLM movement have spoken in opposition to Israel and Zionism, with a few groups going so far as to exclude Jewish organizations and participants, many black Jews find themselves in a difficult situation where aspects of their identity seem in conflict, a dilemma between race and their religious and cultural identity. Today, Black, Latino, Asian, Mizrahi, and other non-white Jews make up 20% of the American Jewish population. This group is often referred to as Jews of color, though the term is contested and I personally don't identify as a Jew of color, which you can read more about in my article on the subject linked below. Despite growing awareness within the Jewish community, Many Jews of color continue to feel that Jewish individuals and organizations treat them as other, requiring them to explain and justify their existence and fight biases within their community. Especially in this cultural moment where racial awareness is in high focus, strengthening the bond between Jews of all colors is a realization of our most important Jewish values, that we unite as a people in our shared mission while treating all humans with respect and dignity.